me. So um, before I start, I just want to do a quick show of hands. How many of you have either unfriended or stopped following somebody on Facebook or stopped talking to somebody because they've said something unpleasant or offensive even about your religion, about your beliefs around Brexit, around immigration, education, food, whatever topic it is that takes your fancy? Show of hands. Who, who've, who's ever unfollowed someone? Got a few brave individuals here. Great. And how many of you have that one person that if you see in the streets, you take a different route because you want to avoid them because you don't really want to have that conversation with? I'm going to be honest. Who else? Who else is that one person? There's a few people here too. Now, unfortunately, this is not surprising. We live in a world where every conversation has the potential to descend into an argument. But this is not normal. Research shows that we are more polarized and more divided than we have ever been. And we're less likely to compromise, which means we're less likely to be listening to one another. We make decisions about where to live, who to marry, and even who our friends are going to be based on what we already believe. We increasingly wall ourselves off in ideological silos, consuming different news, talking only to like-minded individuals, and essentially staying within the comfort of our echo chambers. Again, that means that we're not listening to one another. A conversation requires a balance between talking and listening. And somewhere along the way, we've lost that balance. We are losing our ability to listen. We spend roughly 60% of our communication time supposedly listening. But we're not very good at it. We retain only 25% of what we hear. As a society, we're becoming more and more impatient. From the, news and the elected officials that we, from, from the news and elected officials, we don't want oratory, we only want sound bites. And on our smartphones, we access 60 second videos that will convey all of the information that we need. Information that will validate our own opinions and beliefs. But where did the art of conversation go? Conversational competence might be the single most overlooked skill that we fail to teach our children. They spend hours each day engaging with ideas and one another through their screens. But rarely do they have an opportunity to truly hone their interpersonal communication skills. Is there any skill more important than being able to sustain confident and coherent conversation? The art of conversation is being replaced by personal broadcasting, with social media serving as a platform to amplify self-promotion. The internet's a useful tool for exchanging ideas but often encourages a read, reflect, and forget about it response that doesn't truly engage us in extended critical thinking or conversation. More worryingly, we're becoming desensitized. We have more things competing for our attention than ever before. The media feels as though it has to scream at us with ridiculous sensationalized headlines in order to get our attention. And that means it's even harder for us to pay attention to the quiet, to the subtle, to the understated. Now, why is this a problem? Well, listening is our gateway to understanding one another. And through understanding one another, we come to respect and appreciate one another. And, dare I say it, to respect difference. So what are we going to do? What can we do to chip away at polarization in everyday life? What can we do to connect with and communicate with those across the divide? Well, the first step is to have face-to-face -face conversations where possible with people of different lived experiences, people whose backgrounds differ to our own. The MIT professor, Sherry Turkle, says, face-to-face -face conversations unfurl slowly. It teaches patience. When we communicate on our digital devices, we learn different habits. We start to expect faster answers. And to get these, we ask one another simpler questions. We dumb down our communications, even on the most important matters. We are tempted to think that our little sips of online connection add up to a big gulp of real conversation, but they don't. We use conversations with one another to learn how to have conversations with ourselves. So a departure from conversation can really matter because it can compromise our capacity for self-reflection. Throughout my life, I've spoken with people that I like. I've spoken with people that I dislike. I regularly speak with people who I disagree with on a deeply personal level but I can still have a great conversation with them, one where I leave having readjusted my worldview. Now, we've all had fantastic conversations where you leave feeling that you've been truly understood or you've left feeling inspired, 
And there's no real reason why all of our interactions cannot be like that. How? Well, I'd like to spend the next few minutes exploring how we can have these intentional conversations and build these connections. Can I get the slides up on the screen, please? So the first point is to use open-ended questions. This might sound simple, but start your questions with who, what, when, where, why, or how. This will allow you to better understand who they are and what it is that they care about. If I ask somebody, were you angry? The answer I'll get is yes, I am, or no, I'm not. But let them describe it. Try asking something like, what makes you angry? That allows the, that individual you're speaking to to pause for a moment, to think, to reflect, and to then give you a much more interesting and deeper response that will create a richer conversation. Next slide. Point two, we need to enter every conversation expecting to learn something. Get ready to have all of your assumptions shifted. Things are not black and white, and we can all stand to learn and listen a little more. The American psychiatrist and author M. Scott Peck said that true listening requires a setting aside of oneself. And sometimes that means setting aside our own personal opinions. He said that sensing this acceptance, the speaker will become less and less vulnerable and more and more likely to open up the inner recesses of his or her mind to the listener. Again, assume that you have something to learn. Next slide. Some of you may remember this chap from science lessons back in school, Bill Nye, the science guy, who said, everyone you will ever meet knows something that you don't. Respect their knowledge and learn from them. It will bring out the best in all of you. Everybody is an expert in something. It's our job to value that knowledge and to learn from them. Next slide. Point number three, be present. Stop that internal monologue. Now, whilst listening, thoughts will come to you and perhaps take you down multiple paths. You might be thinking about the 100 things that you've got to get through that day, or you might be thinking about when somebody else said something that um, relates to that conversation, and you now have something that you want to, to ask as a follow-up question, a follow-up question that you're determined to ask. This means that you have most likely stopped actively listening. So clear your mind and let the person that you are listening to guide the conversation. The average person talks at about 225 words per minute, but we can listen up to 500 words per minute. So our minds start to fill in those other 275 words. It takes effort and energy to actually pay attention to someone, but if you can't do that, you're not in a conversation. Next slide. Stephen Covey, the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People said it best. Most of us do not listen with the intent to understand. We listen with the intent to reply. Next slide. Point number four, do not equate your experience with theirs. If they're sharing something personal about when they lost a loved one, don't feel you have to share your experience about your own bereavement. If they're talking about the trouble they're having at work, don't tell them about how much you hate your work. It's not the same. It's never the same. All experiences are individual. And more importantly, it's not about you. Conversations are not a promotional opportunity. Next slide. And finally, number five, the most important one, listen. You may have heard the saying, we were given two ears, but only one mouth, because listening is twice as important and hard as talking. And simply put, if your mouth is open, you are not listening. So why do we not listen to each other? For most of us, we'd rather talk. When we're talking, we're in control of the conversation. We don't have to listen to anything that might make us uncomfortable. It takes effort and energy to actually pay attention to someone. But if you can't do that, you're not in a conversation. So try being intentional about listening and strive towards being an active listener at all times. One of the most enjoyable aspects of my job was the, is the freedom to have several conversations a week with people from diverse and varied backgrounds from across the country with individuals who hold different beliefs and hold different politics to me. And I always come away richer for it. Everyone has something incredible to offer. And so when I engage in these conversations, I try and stay silent for as long as I possibly can. I keep my mind open and I'm always prepared to be amazed and I've never been disappointed. So today I invite you to do the same thing. Go out, talk to people and really listen. And more importantly, be prepared to be amazed. I invite you to take on this challenge, to connect with each other, to listen to one another, 
and to be prepared to be amazed. By doing this, we can transform the world to one of connection, to one of understanding, and to one of respect. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Thanks,